This is Recon Assassination Protocol Gameplay Video 1. If you recall, based off the setup video, this is the same exact map. I have the miniatures out here. Obviously, some of them aren't painted, and some are on the old base because we haven't put the other ones together. We're just going to locate and destroy the server. That's the objective, if you remember, from Splinter in Your Mind. It says it's a 1-5 to five player game. It is, um, but if you play single player, two players, three players, four players, all five mercs have to be there. But you still can play it with a single player. That's why we created the single player game boards. So the first phase is the agent phase. We draw an agent movement card. So here's our movement card. If the security level is two or higher, all blue agent discs moves towards the nearest stairs. Uh, we just started the security track is at zero. It's not level two or higher. So then we just follow the instructions on the card. Blue agents move one area on white. So let's start here. So blue agents move one area on white. So here, because there's a wall here, it's only going to come this way. There's no blue discs over here. There is over here. It can go this way. There's a wall here, so it's only going to go that way. This white disc can go this way or this way, and since he can, I'm going to roll a yellow die. It is a burst, so he's going to go in the direction of the burst, which is down, so he's going to go this way. So what happens is when it's tied, you're going to roll, and that's why the bursts have to be opposite to the blanks. If it would have came blank, he would have entered this way. White's going to come out. White's going to come out. And that's all the blues. What happens with the reds? Red agent moves two areas towards orange. So, wall, so it's going to be here. And at this point, he's going to have to roll blank, so he's going to come out. This could be bad. He's going to come out. There's a wall, so he's going to be here. This way or this way. Blank, so he's going to come here. And now he's going to stop because he can't go anymore. He moves two areas on orange, and so wall, wall. One and two. Because it's a wall, so he's going to come out and move this direction. So that's all the reds. And now, if security level one or higher, it is, then black agent discs move towards the closest red agent and convert it to one sec four. He's just going to move all the way to him. So we know this is going to be one sec four. So we take this off, and he becomes a sec four. Closest red agent disc is one, two, three, four, five, six. So six. So he's gonna come here. This guy's gonna become sec four. One. So those are the black agent discs. Now the security level penalty. If security level two or higher, then all employees double their move value. Moving to B in phase one. After all agents have moved, if an agent ends in line of sight, then draw an event card to reveal an OP4. They aren't in line of sight because this is a wall. And so then it's the OP4 phase. OP4 activate in order. 4, 3, 2, 1. So Security Force 1 will activate. Basically, this poor fool has been sent to check out something that's happened in the entrance hall. They don't think it's a big deal yet. Isn't he going to be a surprise? So here's his card. Two blood, zero armor, two movement. So he's going to go ahead and move two. He can't come in here. It's filled. It's a door, so he doesn't have line of sight, so he can't really do anything. He can't come in there because the, the, the area limit is three, and there's already three in here. Technically, if we would have set up like this, he could have come in here and attacked. But why would you do that? You want to get everyone out, so. But it is going to create a conundrum for us because he counts as a space, and now this space only has two. So whoever's first coming out is going to have to deal with certain things. And the first person that comes out is the first person whose turn it is. And we know from setup that the daimyo, because he is the highest on priority. So he's going to go ahead and activate. He's going to step out for one. Now he has to stop immediately before he can do anything else so he can determine what these other agents in line of sight are. In um, real terms, what has happened is someone's gone out into the hall and now they're in line of sight. I'm going to do some modifications here just to talk about certain rules that some people have asked about. Let's say this agent was here. This is considered in line of sight of the daimyo. 
as is this and this and this. But this is not. You must have complete area view of another area. So even if he was here, no, there's no line of sight there because this area can't see this area. All right, so we've drawn the card. This is it. It's the event deck. You just draw one card immediately. It is secured level one. So any blue discs will become workers, any red discs will become technicians, and any black discs will become two sec four or one unique. The or one unique is there for expansions, but it's also there for your um, cameo characters. So for instance, if you had Roy McLean, then this allows that to happen. But it would have to be a security level one cameo character, special character. So that's how they pop in your game. This is also used for for expansions. So let's go ahead and put one worker here. So when you move a when you replace an agent disc, that agent disc goes off the board. And the black becomes two sec four ones. Now obviously you'll have these as miniatures. The daimyo's in trouble because he has to clear out of the way to let the other people escape. Otherwise there's a bottleneck here and he's left fighting a bunch of people. Even a bun even secure level ones can do a lot of damage if they come in numbers. Now we have to make a decision and that's basically what recon is about. The leader or the daimyo, the Kaizai was a daimyo, he you will go until you want to not go or until you run out of command points. He spent one to step out, so he has five command points left. If he uses all of his command points, his priority is going to go up. So he, if you're more active, you're going to become the target more often. And so he needs to measure what he's going to do with other people. Now, workers, they can be captured. Employees can be captured. Sec4 cannot. So having another guy come out and capture this guy isn't something that, that's feasible at this point. And we can't forget the goal. Now, you can absolutely light this entire hallway up and he would probably do fine. He would increase his priority a lot and he would increase his security level. But that's not going to get him closer to the goal. What's the goal? Remember the goal. Because it's easy to get distracted with fighting in this game. And at this point, we know that this could be a server, that's a server, that's a server, that's a server. We don't know where it is. And so he's going to take the opportunity, as opposed to attack, he's going to move over here for one more command point. Boom. Now he could be done here, but the daimyo has the scanner. The scanner allows him to spend one CP to find out what that is without using a breach and clear. And this is important. There's multiple ways to find out what these things are. Capture and interrogate, the scanner, or breach and clear. If you breach and clear every single question mark location, you will lose. You have to manage your CPs wisely because by the time you get done with the second uh, question mark the security level will be so high that you'll probably end up losing before you even find it. We might get lucky. It might be right here in the bathroom. Maybe. I don't know. So let's go ahead and spend a CP. This was set up and we haven't moved it from the moment we set it up before so I have no idea what any of these things are. Uh, he's going to spend one CP, as it says on his board, in his kit area. Scanner, range one area, use kit one CP, reveals hidden objective. This is one area. If it was here, he could have used it. Here, 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 or here is all one area. So he spent his one CP, and he reveals this objective. Let's flip it over. It is the safe. Good place for a safe. That's where they keep the toilet paper that's really, really soft, as opposed to that really hard, horrible toilet paper that's like sandpaper. Only the executives know the code of the safe, so all the workers have to use really bad toilet paper. So let's talk about what the safe does, because each location, you'll find this on the back of the book, provides something. So if a merc goes and interacts with this location, in this case the safe, in the next breach and clear, the next B and C, if that merc interacted with the safe, the op form may be forced to reroll all successes. If I go interact with that safe, and in, in, I'm thinking the spy, uh, she has the ability to really interact with things quickly and easily. It could set us up for a nice, easy breach and clear. Of course, if you don't do that, the breach and clear could be a disaster. We'll wait and find out. Um, I also think this is a good opportunity to talk about combined actions because I'd like to do one here. Now, this is what I can. I'm thinking about doing the the attack and move. Um, combined actions show the total CP that must be spent between all mercs involved in the action. In other words. Two mercs need to spend a total of three CP. I'm going to go ahead and spend one CP with the daimyo and 
three and, and two CP with the spy. What happens? One member moves three areas, the other member gets to perform one sweeping attack. And why that's important is it moves this person to a position before it's their turn. The spy doesn't move till four. I don't know what it's going to be like, but if I want her to go in and interact with the safe, I can do that. And as far as the attack is concerned, I can attack before she moves or I can move and then have her have the daimyo attack. I'm going to go ahead and have her move. She gets to move three. One, two, three. Now the daimyo is going to get to attack. So the daimyo is going to perform a sweeping attack. It costs one CP. He gets to roll one red, three yellow, and one black. His range is three areas. So now it's time to talk about tactics. <laughs> um, he can fire at this person, this area, or he can fire at this area. If he fires at this area, this person could have become a collateral target. But there's a reason why he shouldn't. Because if he actually has the capacity to damage both of these guys, that means he's rolled collateral damage, which means this worker's dead, and we've placed a collateral damage. So with targeting this particular area with that sweeping attack could mean we go up two security levels uh, and it's just way not worth it at this point he's just gonna go ahead and try to shoot this sec for one uh, he gets to he spent his one CP already with the um, with the attack and move so he doesn't need to spend another one he just spent the one he gets the attack um, one red three yellow one black against the sec for one who has no armor bonus he doesn't get an armor bonus here so let me show no armor, no armor bonus, so he's not going to get any soak dice. So if I get a success, he has two hit points, he's going he's gonna to take that as damage. Ignore these because they're blank and a shield. I rolled two successes, so those two successes cause two damage. He is removed, and he goes to the casualty pool. So I moved the camera over, so he attacked he needs to move this over one. If he attacked again, this would come down again and he would get an excessive force penalty. If you kill an employee, you get an employee KIA token. He's going to just stop and he's going to be done. In the meantime, we've added the security force that he killed into the casualty pool. So he's not done anything excessive this time and at the end of the round we will roll based off of the members in this casualty pool based off of these dice and the security level can go up numbers based off of that there's some automatic increases and those are covered over by the security track so the daimyo is done he is sitting at two command points so he's not taking any damage he's used one attack and what's nice is I was able to do a combined action with the spy, so the spy is out here ready to go, and it's not even her turn yet. She doesn't go until the fourth uh, person. Now we're going to start with, we're going to go to the wrench next. And this is the wrench. He has to travel a long way to get stuff done. So let's see what he's going to do. So I think I'm going to have the wrench come out. It would cost one, two, and three, four and he could cause some extra damage uh, and I think I would rather rely on someone with some single target capabilities he has a carbine which if he does the cheapest attack uh, does collateral damage so I'm just gonna hustle with him so I'm gonna spend three CP to move four areas one, hey, kick you, two, three he's gonna come in here for four or he can move here for four and make it lively. So he's going to move there for four because I want the spy to do that because it's much, much cheaper for her to do it. And I don't mind revealing that agent um, because the security level is still very low. So better to do it earlier than not. So he has to stop immediately. He can't do anything else than hustle. So he's basically done. Um, and we just got to find out what type of agent that is. All right. Flip the card. It's security for level one. Blue becomes one technician. Fantastic. So the next person to go, next uh, Merc to go, is the Kaiser Waza Heavy. Would be him. He's going to spend one CP to come out. And now uh, I have a decision to make now, don't I? Because I could be very careful, spend more CP and kill one person, or he can probably spend he can spend one CP and I suspect he would wipe out all of those people. I know what Kenny would do. I have myself talking on one shoulder and I have Kenny whispering to me in the other saying, do it, do it. 
and this is also a learning game so we might as well show you everything there is to, to do. I'm not sure I would do this right now but I'm going to do it because he's gonna go ahead and do a sweeping attack. That is one CP. He rolls four black dice and does one auto collateral. So let's talk about that. An auto collateral means that everyone in here auto automatically before any roll is gonna take a damage. It also means this worker who has one hit point he's dead. So we're gonna put him in the casualty pool and we're gonna give the heavy an employee KIA token. So let's deal with it in order. We'll apply the second, so this guy takes a damage and this guy takes a damage. They each have two hit points. The worker's dead, which means the heavy gets the employee KIA token. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on his board. It's just a reminder. This is the excessive force token. Um, if you attack more than one time in a round, you're going to get this. It increases your priority by one. And we also know that he also did damage to the area. So you're going to add a collateral damage disc. The trick here is it's not added until all the damage is applied. They do not get, in other words the people here, do not get credit for the one armor bonus uh, while they're getting attacked. They don't get any armor so he's just going to basically roll his four black dice, his collateral damage dice, and any successes would harm every single person in the area. I had two successes so these guys are both dead. We add them to the casualty pool and we place a collateral damage disc here which causes something immediately. So this is in the book but we're going to talk about the anatomy of the card here. This means it provides armor now. This means only two mercs can be in it. This means to damage it to the next level you have to do two collateral damage to it and this one in a triangle means that's the first level of collateral damage. It also, because it's the first disc we place, we go over to our immediate security level increases. So it's going to go from zero to two. This is a number, this is a level. So it goes from one to two, going to go to two. The next thing we do is we put this token into the casualty pool area. And what this means is regardless this isn't rolled. This means we've already increased at one level. When this is placed, you'll see this at the bottom of page seven. If any of the immediate conditions are met, then raise the security counter to the lowest number, the next highest security level. In addition, place the security level increase token in the casualty pool. The presence of this token eliminates the need to roll for a security level increase in the rest refresh phase. However, leave these here. Why I'd leave them here? I'm not going to roll because there are some conditions based on the mission that if the casualty pool is filled and this counts as a space then something happens. So let's talk about what's not in the book because we've hit a situation that's not in the book. It's in the fact and it's going to be published, uh, put up on our website um, probably next week because the games will start to arrive uh, for those people in China and Taiwan and in Asia and those kinds of places. So no, let's say none of these people died but we had to place a collateral damage disc there. That collateral damage disc has a number two on it which means only two people can be in there. This is what's going to happen. The highest security force there is going to move in a space away um, from the mercs. He'll go there. Why? Not there because here he's still in the line of sight to attack. Uh, if there was a Merc there, for instance, he would probably go there. Uh, if they're all the same security force, then select the one who has the most hit points. If they're all the same hit points, it really doesn't matter. You can put it anywhere. Um, the key is they will not go into the space where the Merc is if they can help it. If they can't help it, uh, then they will. If there were three people here and three people here, then obviously he's going to go there. Otherwise, the highest security force or the highest um, op 4 in that area is going to move one area away and stay in line of sight if he can. Now coming back to the heavy, if we look at his weapon, the VMR2, that's the sweeping attack with the four black and the one lateral collateral, the italics underneath that says it uses two attacks. So he is going to receive an excessive force token. So he has two attacks because this uses two attacks and he received an employee KIA token and an excessive force token. So he's going to stop right there because he doesn't want any more priority to come his way. So we've taken care of everyone who can see us but obviously the people in the building know <laughs> 
that something's up because they've heard the explosion and there's a fire at the end of this hallway, uh, which is why the security in increased. Now it is the spy's turn. Uh, she has the number four on her on her board, um, and she's here. She's going to go ahead and spend one CP ding, to move into here. It doesn't cost any extra to move through doors. It's just one space to the other. Um, and she's going to interact with this safe. Interact costs 3 CP and you can use the location for its secondary purpose. If the mission required us to actually interact with a the location, then this would count towards that. It costs 3 CP, but let's go ahead and look at the spy's board. She's going to be using her multi-tool. She has to have be in the same area, range same. Use kit 1 CP, so she's going to have to spend 1 CP but it reduces the CP cost by two when using the interact action. So as opposed to costing three, it would cost her, so it totally, it cost her a total of two points to use the interact action because she has to use kit as well. Uh, some people have a personal ability that stacks with the use kit or the multi-tool or something like that and so it reduces the cost of the interact action considerably more. And some, I think in one case it's free. Regardless, we've interacted with the safe, which means we receive the bonus. In the next B and C, if the spy is in the breach and clear, the op four may be forced to roll re-roll all successes. Well, you know, it's a may because you may have other goals within the breach and clear, but I, I guarantee you I'm gonna get her in the breach and clear. And it happens every time they roll, so she's very, very important for it's very, very important for her to be in the next breach and clear. However, the spy, um, while she hasn't killed anybody, she's been quite active. She used the combined action with the daimyo, spent two CP there. She spent a CP to move into the bathroom and then a total of two to interact. So she's down to one, so she's going to be done. Actually, you know what? She's just going to go ahead and spend one more and move out. Yeah. Now, it's important to note that any of these people can interact with the safe. She, I just chose her to do it. Anyone can, multiple people can interact with the safe. Once it's interacted with, it's not like it disappears. So the last person to go in my Mercs team is the Kaizai Waza Pathfinder. Um, he has a single shot weapon with good range and he doesn't cause the lateral damage. Um, so he's going to go ahead and act, he's going he's gonna to discover what he can discover. So he's going to spend one to come out here and two to go out here. One, because it gives him that extra armor and that's tasty. Um, and he might as well reveal these, see what they are, and see if he can attack them. So we draw the event card. If you remember now, it's security level 2. So that red will become 2 security force 1, and that blue will become 1 security force 1. So, yeah, there's that. Red becomes 2, and the blue becomes 1. At least they're both security force 1. So, he's going to attack. Now I'm trying to decide, and I've said it before and I, I can't say it enough, understanding how to use the combined actions really makes the game more dynamic. It's not my turn, your turn, your turn, your turn. Uh, if you have enough CP, you can do other things. So he can attack and move with, say, the heavy, because the heavy still has quite a few CP left. Now, he can move, the heavy could end up moving here. It could move even further. Um, it can move over here to try to um, cower that technician so it doesn't move because if we can capture that technician uh, we can reveal one of the other objectives in one of the other locations so it may be worthwhile not to mention we have another question mark on the way uh, question mark meaning objective so if we swing this way we can maybe reveal this objective capture this guy reveal this objective over here and it creates a situation where we only have to deal with that one over there as opposed to splitting the team I don't know uh, if I want to do that, but I think I do. Attack and move. He will spend 2 CP, the heavy will spend 1, and the heavy gets to move 3 spaces. Because these two people are in line aside of te this technician, he absolutely cowers. He's not going to move because there's more smirks than there are security force, meaning 0. Now he's going to attack. He has range 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so he's not going to attack this guy, although if he was in range he could have. So he's going to go ahead and shoot these guys. He's going to attack with his lowest attack, which is one red, three yellows, single target. One, two, three successes. They have two hit points. 
so he's dead. I move him to the casualty pool. He lowers his attack by one, and he's going to be done. I think that's my entire Merc's phase. So in the refresh phase, before any resupply, we reset priority. So we're going to just do the heavy, and then I'm going to do the rest of them. Um, but I want to do the heavy first because the excessive force and the KIA, the KIA token. Um, he spent three CP, so this zero means this isn't going to move based off of command points spent. But these mean it's going to go up one for each of these. So it's going to go one, two. So he's going to be at four. The daimyo, if you recall, spent two total CP. He has two total CP left, which means his CP is going to go up one. Or his priority is going to go up one. The wrench, he's at three, so it's not going to go up at all. The spy used all of his, so it's going to go up three. And the pathfinder at two, so it's going to go up one. So that's the, uh, the results of all the priorities. In case of ties, players choose who has the priority change. The daimyo is fine staying number one. The spy would rather not be number four or number two. Oh yeah, might as well make him number two. So the spy gets number two. The heavy will remain number three. They're all together. The other the two have to decide between four and five. The pathfinder wants to go first or before, which means the wrench is number five. So now that those new numbers are assigned, we can restore or resupply. No one took the initiative action, and I'll make sure I do that this next round perhaps. Um, so everyone, and no one's been damaged, so everyone's going to get four CP. So we just add four. One, two, three, four. So everyone's at maximum except the spy who's at four. So the more active you are, the more priority. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to, have to take a pause. The uh, exclamation point there says we don't have to roll. So uh, Cassidy Pool is cleared. So we draw an agent movement card, and the agents move. I would start there. Here it is. If there are any red agent discs within two areas of a Mercs, then they move into line of sight. He would, but he can't because agents will not move into an area where there is a Merc. It's very clear about that. And I can tell. We clearly took care of the red last time. <laughs> Blue agent discs move two areas towards orange. Black agent discs move one area on orange. Now, if it is secured to level 2 or higher, it is secured to level 2. One black agent disc appears in three adjacent offices at the building edge. So the command was, if secured to level 2 or higher, one black agent disc appears in three adjacent offices at the building edge. Which means we need adjacent offices. An office, biolab, R&D, an office. So in this case, we'd only be able to put one. There's no offices down below, there's no offices on this side, and there are one, two offices in an interrogation in a bathroom. So even though it's not three, uh, this is the most we can have, and so we're going to place these two here. If there were no offices anywhere on the edge, which is impossible, by the way, but then we wouldn't, we wouldn't place that. If there were no more than one, then we would just put it in one. In this case, two black discs appear there. They come crashing through the windows. Dun, 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 dun. So now the security force activate. They move two. Um, and this is the one I forgot to move. And he would have moved here, to be honest with you. So that's where we're going to put him. I apologize. I was focused on the camera down here. Um, so all the security force one are going to move and try to get into range. Their range is one area, so he's going to move here. They will move towards targets in line of sight. Uh, there are no other targets in line of sight than him. Um, so they, these two will move this direction as well. And that's it and that's all for the movement. Now this security force is going to get to attack. So he's going to, he gets to attack one target twice. So he's going to roll his two yellow dice. He got one success so the Pathfinder gets his one shield plus his other shield, so he gets to roll to soak that. He soaked it, so he doesn't take damage from that. And then the second attack, no damage, so he doesn't even need to soak it. So I'm in a pretty good position, but I definitely want to try to capture this technician, and I want to get the daimyo over this question mark. So I need to do, I'm basically going to swing all these guys this way and hope my Pathfinder can 
hold the hold the line over here. And this is I mean, there's a lot of planning and talking and thinking in recon. It's just quite a bit more structured. And after the security force activate, technically this guy would activate, but because there's two mercs and he's cowering, like I said, he's not going to go anywhere. If he wasn't cowering, because a merc has covered up this stair, he's going to head this way and try to get to this stairs. If this merc wasn't here, he would try to head this way. And so the daimyo's first here. He's not going to be part of the capture, so he's just going to hustle. Goes four, one, two, three, four. So he can't scan this time, but he's in position. Person who goes next is the one with the two, and that would be the spy. She's gonna attack and move with the Pathfinder. She's gonna spend one, the Pathfinder will spend two. Yes, it's more expensive, um, but in this case, her priority is gonna be able to get switched. She's gonna be able to move three, one, two, and she's gonna stay right there, filling that space up. And then he's going to attack with his lowest attack which is one red and three yellow against that sec four right in front of him technically he could pick this target so let's just go ahead and do that to explain what uh, collateral targets how they work so I'm just gonna read it right out of the book we know this is his attack pool at this point and as opposed to attacking this guy he's gonna shoot this guy down here he's definitely in range his range is four so one two three got it and this will allow us to demonstrate something that has confused some people. But I'm just going to read it right out of the book. If there are any collateral targets in the same, in the areas between the attacker and the target, the intended target, this one, then add one soak die, that would be one collateral damage die, per collateral target, since there's only one. If this guy was here, we would have another one. Shields rolled count as damage to the collateral target. Damage is applied to a single collateral before moving on to additional. So here I'm going to roll. If this black comes up as a shield, this guy takes a damage. It does not. And he missed. However, let's look at Kaizai Waza's corporate ability. Kaizai Waza can spend one CP to re-roll all attack dice and it can be used multiple times so he's going to go ahead and spend one and he has to roll them all again even the collateral target die very good two successes this was not a shield so this guy isn't damaged he's fine two successes means this guy's dead he has no armor he has two health so this guy was removed and placed in the casualty pool I also make sure I remember to lower my attack the Pathfinder is now at one. No, he's at two. I'm sorry. He's at two because he shot twice and he rerolled one time. That is still the same attack. Now, once again, if this die would have come up as a shield, he would have taken a damage. We would have marked it because he has two hit points. If there were two collateral targets in here and I shot this guy and I rolled two shields, this guy would have taken two damage and been killed. And if this was the situation, and I roll two shields, it's going to be applied to one target before it moves on to the next one. It says that. So, either way, it's all going to be applied to one target. In this case, I didn't roll. No big deal. So that was all on the spy's turn. Even though the Pathfinder moves fourth, because of the attack and move, he was able to attack. And because of the Budo, he got to re-roll. Heavy is going to... He's going to really wish he moved later. He's gonna go ahead and move three. One, two, three. He's not gonna hustle. One, two, three. Uh, and he's done. Uh, the Pathfinder's turn. Um, he could attack again, but he'd get excessive force. Um, he's just gonna spend one CP to reload. He has quick reload. He could attack after reload and it provides an extra attack slot. What that extra attack slot means is he has four attacks as opposed to three. So he reloaded and can attack if he wants to. Um, his priority is pretty low so he might do that. He's going to go ahead and do it. He's going to spend one CP and attack this guy and we have the same exact situation. One red, three yellow, and a black. The black is not a shield. He doesn't take damage. The two hit him, he's dead. He gets an excessive force penalty, but he's okay with that because he's doing, he's doing his job. 
And that will be the end of the Pathfinder, which leads us to the wrench over here. So the wrench is going to spend one, two, three, four CP. Four CP. Uh, and how much is the CP to capture? Costs one CP to capture, so he's going to go ahead and spend that CP and capture him. So this guy is going to capture this guy. That means the technician is put on the wrench's board. I don't know if that was wise, but that's what's happening. And I'll explain why here shortly. Well, I'll explain right now. So the technician is on the wrench's board, so you've placed the guy on the board. His interrogation is going to cost three CP and he only rolls two yellow, which means he has to succeed if he wants information because the technician's interrogation threshold is two. The heavy, on the other hand, let me see if I can do this without craziness, rolls one red and two yellow, which means if the heavy would have been allowed to capture him, but he couldn't capture him this turn, he would have been very much a better interrogator than the wrench. And so you have to pay attention to things like that. So the next thing, we've hit the refresh phase. The next thing we do is reset priority. There are two sec four in the casualty pool. Sec four one and two, you roll two yellow dice. So I'm going to roll two yellow dice and see what the results are. One success, one not success. Let's see what happens. We had one success. That means it's going to go up one number, not one level. So it's going to be at three. All right. This could be a very good turn or a very not so good turn. Reveal the card. If there are red agent discs in the same area as blue agent discs. Both discs move two areas. Towards white, uh, there are not. Blue agent discs move three areas on white. So let's deal with this. Blank, here, here, and here. It heard gunfire, it's running. We don't know what it is, man, woman, security force. This blue will move one area, uh, three areas on white. It goes towards blank. It would actually move three more area, two more areas, but since it's in line of sight, it's going to stop right there. And in the agent phase, we move all the agents before we draw an event card. Red moves two areas on white. This could come out. It does not. And so it's going to stay there. Basically, it's hunkering in a corner. And why wouldn't it? It's hiding under the desk. Uh, black, if secured level 3 or higher, it is not. Black agent discs move three areas closer to a merc. If it was one more number, all of these guys would come out. In this case, none come out. And the security level is if security level 3 or higher, security force 2 sec 4 appear at the stairs closest to the mercs. It's not, but if it would have been, so that one number saved us from these guys coming out and guys coming out right there. So we're good to go, as is. Um, we draw an event deck card for this blue agent that moved into line of sight. It is security level two. Two sec four ones. Let's clear this out. There we go. And that is all she wrote for the agent phase. Now it is the up four phase. These guys don't have line of sight here, but they have line of sight here, so they're definitely going to move this way. One, two. And he will get to attack again. He attacks one target twice. Which is he going to attack? He's going to attack the one with the highest priority. The Pathfinder. So the Pathfinder has the highest priority, so this guy's going to attack the Pathfinder. If they were both tied, then the Mercs would get to choose. He gets his two soap dice. So that would be one success. He soaked it. And the second attack, no successes. Same as last time. So the Pathfinder chose to go first because he can pick people off. And so he's going to do the same thing. One red, three yellow, one collateral because he's going to shoot this guy right here. He's going to lower his attack by one. He's also probably only going to attack one time this turn to keep his priority middle. Uh, one, two, three, four successes, so he definitely got him. No shield, so he's dead. Put him in the casualty pool. So the MVP so far, the one whose name's in the paper is the Pathfinder. So if you recall, the wrench has captured the technician. 
He can't move and he can't do anything else until this is taken care of. All right? Um, if it's a worker, you don't, if you capture them, you just dismiss them. You don't put them in the casualty pool. You don't put them on your board. You just zip tie them and leave them in the corner here. But the technician you're trying to get information out of. His interrogation threshold is two. The wrench rolls two yellow dice. So if we get two successes, he's going to tell us what we want to know. He got no successes. He said, man, this guy doesn't know anything. Just look at him. And so he tried his one time. Now he's cleared from the board. He doesn't go to the casualty pool. He's just cleared. So we failed to get information from him. He would have, if we would have got the information, revealed the objective in the data center. So that would have been real nice because then we wouldn't have to come over here and we could possibly scan this, reveal this, and we would know where the objective is for sure if he would have been successful. It was unfortunate. So interrogating cost three CP. One, two, three. Uh, so he's going to be done. <laughs> he, he took a long time to find out nothing. Uh, the third person to go is the daimyo. The daimyo is going to spend his one CP to scan the adjacent target. Ah, oh, it's the power core. So that's also not what we're looking for. The power core, the Merc that interacts with this location, performs the reload action for free and restores two CP immediately and can act again. Well, that's pretty sweet. But he doesn't need to do that. In fact, he's going to force the issue at this point and he's going to move two. One, two. One, two. That reveals this agent. So we pull this card. Security Force 2, black, 2 Sec 4 2 or 1 unique. So we have our first Sec 4 2 or shotgun guys. Now he wants to scan again, but he has to be within, within one area. If he moves into here, this is the same room, so this would be a breach and clear, which means he cannot move into this room without a breach and clear action because the objective's in there. However, it's just one area orthogonal, so he can move one CP in here and then scan. Through the wall, he knows this is the server. So now we know this is where the objective is. We can ignore this. And basically, he gets on the radio and says, everyone needs to get their face over here. So we know where the server is. That's our objective, our first part of the, the mission. So we need to get over there.